Designed by Armstrong Whitworth as an all-purpose medium bomber for mass production, the Albemarle embodies many new features of design and construction. Plastics have played a greater part in her manufacture than in any other British service aircraft, and she's the first British-built bomber to be equipped with a tricycle undercarriage. Well, let's put the Albemarle through her paces and see what we can see. Straight away, a mid-wing monoplane with two radial engines and a rather slab-sided fuselage. Round a bit, and we see a nose rather pointed from this angle and well in front of the engines. A noticeable step up to the cockpit, which is set well back from that nose. Straight taper to both wing edges and the rather Blenheim-like curve of the tips. And sometimes you may be able to pick out the unusual amount of glass toward the tail. Twin fins and rudders with a break in the leading edge where rudder joins fin. The tailplane itself is mounted high and has slight dihedral. Plenty to go for on the Albemarle. Now to keep her still and chalk up the points. Almost pointed, well-glazed nose. Rather bristle, but there's lots more to make her the Albemarle. Fuselage with the step up at cockpit and down again amidships after that power operated gun turret. Underside of fuselage curving up well aft to that most unusual conservatory or observation position under the high set tailplane. Tailplane has twin fins and rudders which are oval in shape but for the brake. Yes, there's any amount to get hold of in the Albemarle. See what you can get from this distant view. Now, creeping closer, let's take in more detail. Deep, straight-sided nose, mid-wing with dihedral from roots, radial engines mounted centrally, but nacelles bulging down for the undercarriage. Wheels just show. The tailplane is just in sight and has slight dihedral to match the wings, making the center section look thick and twin fins and rudders sprout up behind the engines. Easy enough now. Lifting a bit, we see the slab-like fuselage and see how the dihedral to tailplane tilts the fins inward. Highly peculiar, that. Now the glass in that rather pointed nose. The Albemarle has no turret to blunt that beak. And the sharp step up to that cockpit, set well back, adds one more to a conclusive set of clues. Now for the straight taper of both wing edges and those distinctive wing tips. Another view of the glass conservatory windows and the tip of the fuselage again. See to the dihedral to high set tailplane with the almost oval fins and rudders. You ought to have the distinctive points of the Albemarle well taped by now. Let's check them over in flight. Pointed glazed nose, nacelles with a bulge, stepped cockpit, and a lot of glass. Yes, easy enough. This time, remember the slab sides to the fuselage. Now, lead of nose in front of engines. Those wings with the tips like a Blenheim, but quite a different taper. Higher up just to test you, but it's still easy once you know, isn't it? Back to examine the tailplane. Yes, beyond the fuselage, remember? Albemarle, of course.
So to summarize, straight tapered wings with distinctive tips, stepped up cockpit set well back, that tail unit, and plenty of glass to watch for Hun and Target means Albemarle to you and me and destruction to the Bosch. <laughs>